Hi, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is Ajay and uh, I work at Microsoft in the host networking group. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, RDMA on MANA, which is the Microsoft Azure network adapter. So uh, high level agenda, basically some background on RDMA, then uh, what exactly is MANA and uh, how the MANA uh, kind of works on use cases like DBDK and RDMA. Uh, I believe most of the folks are already aware uh, about what's the motivation for RDMA. It's been around for almost uh, two decades now, but I'll just state the obvious. And I uh, guess our previous two speakers already alluded to how slow the software is anyways, so everything is moving into hardware. So modern data center applications uh, demand high throughput and low latency, and uh, yes, like the previous speaker said, the uh, TCP IP stacks cannot meet its requirements, so RDMA is obviously solves this problem. Benefits of RDMA, uh, it, improves, it improves the tail latency, especially for uh, storage I.O. Uh, by eliminating uh, the TCP overhead uh, data copies and the HTTP formatting. Uh, the switches and the NICs form a lossless fabric. Basically, there is a hop by a hop uh, back pressure control, uh, which is like the PFC, that eliminates uh, retransmission right, due to congestion drops. And uh, we have uh, DCQCN, which is the data center quantized uh, uh, congestion notification, which prevents the queue buildup in the switches. Uh, which has uh, the ECN, which is the explicit congestion notification plus end-to-end uh, -end congestion control implemented inside the NIC. And uh, obviously we have CPU savings. So uh, there is hardly any CPU overhead uh, in the read and the write operations. Uh, the data is directly uh, DM it down uh, at the receiver and into the memory. Uh, let's see this with the help of an example. So. We have a node, two nodes here, basically the node A, which is the sender node, and uh, there's a node B, which is a receiver node, and both of these nodes allocate memory, and they want, the node A wants to send some data to node B. Uh, it puts the data into the buffer, then uh, rings the doorbell of the NIC, the NIC DMAs it down, and then uh, bounces off through various switches and routers, and eventually to the receiver NIC, and the receiver NIC then DMAs, DMA, DMA backs the data into the receiver node. So uh, it, as we can see, it bypasses the uh, OS stack and uh, frees up the host CPU, which lowers the latency. It's a very, very simple example. Uh, what exactly is MANA? Right? So MANA is our Microsoft Azure network adapter. Uh, and basically, this is more like a marketing slide, but uh, it leverages the latest future uh, acceleration features in the, and it provides competitive performance. Uh, has I mean, it does the, uh, it provides performance availability, extensibility, servicing critical features, which is very important to the cloud. Uh, it's designed specifically with RDMA performance uh, in mind, and uh, it enables the customers to achieve low latency and high throughput. And it's implemented in FPGA RTL, which furthers Microsoft's investments in FPGA technology. Uh, if anyone is interested, we can go ahead and uh, go to the Azure Boost preview site and test drive this. So compared to the uh, traditional infrastructure, I think we all saw that in the previous talk, if you guys uh, attended that, uh, the TCP IP is running, if, if, if it is running in the host OS, then uh, the customer workloads, most of the resources, uh, instead of uh, being given to, let's say, uh, the customer, uh, they are being utilized in doing the network or the storage I.O. Uh, compare that to uh, accelerated uh, offload infrastructure, where we transfer over that uh, to sort of like a card, or we call it Azure, Azure Boost, where now the, uh, the host resources uh, are free and which can be sort of given back to the VMs uh, rather than doing storage IOs and the offload will do all the other work for you. So the heavy lifting will be done by the offload. 
So this is uh, at a high level what MANA components look like. Basically, uh, it's a very simple uh, overview, like you have a hypervisor machine or the host machine on the left hand side, uh, and on top of it you have the virtual machine which has our own uh, MANA driver, talks to uh, the card which is the Azure Boost over a PCI link, and uh, when the virtual machine, uh, the application in the virtual machine wants to set up the infrastructure which is the RDMA infrastructure, the queues, uh, the send queue, receive queues, and the completion queues. It talks to uh, the, mana, the, the Azure Boost, and in the Azure Boost, it's the mana management software, uh, and it sets it up, and then it does uh, ring the doorbells, and uh, the FPGA then sends it over, or, or, or it receives back over the Tor path. Uh, how the Linux MANA driver looks, uh, uh, or, or how is it modeled, it's basically modeled as an auxiliary device to the main ETH device. Uh, the hardware is exposed as a PCIe device, and uh, each of these uh, sort of uh, support multiple network devices over one PCIe function. Uh, so in each of these are essentially net devices which can be uh, optionally used to export uh, or expose uh, RDMA port, which is the IB port. Currently, we only support the Rocky V2, and uh, we support two types of Q pairs. One is the raw Q pair, and the other one is the RC Q pair. Uh, the raw Q pair is used to expose the Ethernet functionality or the native functionality uh, device queues to the user mode, which is used by DPDK. And the RC is the reliable connection, which also supports CM verbs, which is uh, used by the RDMA. Um, this is the same slide, kind of explaining how pictorically uh, it looks like from the previous one. Uh, basically, uh, you see the PCI device as a one virtual function, uh, sort of exposed through the hardware. And in within the one VF, you have uh, different type of, or n number of ports, uh, and each of these ports sort of morph into a net device, uh, which could be further uh, exposed as an IB port, uh, and that is what we are trying to show here. So uh, how does DPDK work over MANA? Basically, a little busy slide, but I'll try to walk you guys through. Uh, at the top, you see we have a DPDK application, uh, and uh, the DPDK application uh, sort of works with the uh, MANA DPDK pole mode driver, um, which is the layer in the DPDK stack. And to get the infrastructure ready, uh, the DPDK needs the VF to be exposed up to the user level. So to get that exposed, we use the uh, lib IB verbs and the IB verbs, which is the Linux uh, RDMA core uh, in the user space, uh, provides a facility where you can uh, write your own uh, provider, which is uh, the uh, lib IB verbs, the MANA IB, the lib, uh, lib MANA, uh, which kind of talks to the kernel level component, which is the MANA IB driver. So basically, the whole control path is set up through the IB verbs, and once the control path is set up, then the application can then uh, once, so when, when we say the control path, basically the queue, the memory mappings and everything, once those are set up, then the application can just post works, uh, work into the work queues and then ring the doorbell, and then it, the data can be transferred through the fast path, which is the, uh, the pink path that we see here. Uh, so <clears throat> why are we using uh, IB verbs for DPDK, right? Uh, basically, if we use uh, VFIO, uh, which is a virtual function IO, then uh, this, we are exposing multiple ports or multiple NICs in one virtual function. And if you use VFIO, then everything will be taken away from the kernel and you will use uh, and will be exposed into the user space. So it's a exclusive uh, either or. So, but if we use the IB verbs, then you can expose just the port, uh, like one of the ports to the TPDK, and then the other port could be used still by the kernel. So, uh, 
that, that, that's very helpful. And uh, we don't need to implement a virtual I.O. MMU. Uh, as we will see in upcoming slides, the memory safety is guaranteed by IB Verbs uh, memory registration. So what exactly uh, is memory registration for MANA? Uh, so basically, uh, the client, uh, when it wants to, let's say, uh, create a queue, um, in, obviously in the guest memory, uh, it registers the virtual address uh, with the MANA hardware, which, is, which can be a guest, guest virtual address or guest uh, physical address. And the MANA hardware uh, then goes ahead and translate uh, that into the host physical address. So basically, we don't need a virtual IOMMU, uh, which is expensive to implement in a hypervisor. And uh, inter-process uh, memory safety is guaranteed by this uh, memory registration, and which is obviously uh, very useful in container workload type of scenarios. So uh, MANA RDMA, basically, we all know how the RDMA works, but uh, I'll just quickly glance over uh, what exactly is happening in, in our DMA world. Uh, you have a client application which registers memory, so it creates the send queues and the receive queues uh, and completion queues uh, with, the, with the NIC. And then uh, the application uh, sort of exchanges the data over these QPs. Uh, for the applicants to application to start uh, using the QPs, they need to share this information beforehand, which is which you can do uh, via out of out of band like TCP/IP, uh, but in uh, Mana case uh, we have our own uh, secure protocol basically, uh, which which makes sure that uh, the connection establishment uh, when the user calls in the CM verbs is uh, is protected uh, in the in the boost where we have our own uh, sort of way of establishing those connections. Uh, how does this fit into uh, the software stack? So basically, uh, at the top level, we have uh, the application, RDMA application, and then uh, at the uh, core, the Linux RDMA core level, we have our own uh, libmana provider. Uh, the libmana provider uh, basically provides the interface from the user space to register memory, uh, sort of, and then create queues and so on, uh, talking to the kernel, which is the control path, into the IB core, and eventually goes to uh, MANA IB. And then uh, the MANA IB then talks to the PCI, uh, to the hardware via the PCI channel to establish the connection, uh, the, uh, to establish the resources. And once the memory registration, memory mapping, everything has been done, uh, and the queues are established, then uh, the application on the user side can post work uh, and send data uh, through the fast path, which is on the left hand side. So it can just ring the doorbells and uh, then send data over. I think that was pretty much where, uh, and it is a very short talk, I know. Uh, I just completed it in like in 20 minutes. Uh, but yeah, uh, I can field any questions if you have, uh, which the best of my ability to answer. So today, if I understand properly, you are using Okay, so the question is, today we are using MANA for networking. How is it different than what is being presented? Yes. Yes. Let me see uh, how well I can answer that. So how is it different than what we are doing today using MANA, uh, using Mellanox virtual functions, right? Uh, this, Part, okay, so let me answer it from what is publicly available, which is the DPDK side, right? So we are planning to start exposing this functionality. Currently, it is being exposed via the host, but we are planning to expose it 
via uh, the user space side to say. Uh, What's the main difference? The, the <laughs> um, it's not the same as using it from the host. Let me say it this way. Okay. Now, um, are you planning to use this for any storage use case? Yes, it's primarily being targeted not just for storage, but for AI workloads as well but not from the host as it is being used currently. From the machine? That's what uh, I, I cannot confirm or deny, but it's not the same. <laughs> so it's primarily a storage adapter, or does it have other APIs for high performance computing, for instance? Uh, it's a hardware adapter which provides you with the same functionality, right, which the IB Verbs provides you, which you can use to do high performance computing workloads. So you, you could use the current IB Verbs functionality from the user space to do whatever computing. They yeah, they tend to have very different demands. Even though the underlying API is just plain old Verbs. They, their, their requirements for number of memory regions and number of Q pairs and you know, small messages per second are radically different between storage and high performance computing. You really have to you know, target your adapter of one or the other in my experience. Our hardware is designed in such a way that it should be able to cater both the needs uh, depending upon what type of workloads you're trying to use yeah, 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 yeah. and in between wow. Adapters as well. Okay. Okay. So it is an Ethernet adapter. It's essentially an Ethernet adapter. Yes. Rocky V two. Yes. It's, it's a little different from DPU. DPUs are very, very specialized sort of processing units, right? But this is more like an FPGA RTL that will do specifically everything inside, like your entire networking stack is also inside the hardware itself. So it's like FPGA-based Yeah, FPGA-based smartening, exactly. You didn't mention encryption support. It will be there. Okay. It will be there. Okay. Yes. For, for transport or for data encryption? Address or in flight? When it will be, let me put it this way. Uh, so let me, let, me, let me put it this way. It will be for both. When it is, so basically from the user side, nothing is even exposed to the boost. No more questions? Thank you.